Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Anya Laurier. I'm a sociologist at the Empathy and Relational Science Program at Mass General. And I'm here along with my colleagues, Dr. Helen Reese, Diego Ranero, and I'd like to also acknowledge Margot Phillips and Linda Zhang, who could not be with us here today. And we'd like to thank the Arnold Gold Foundation for making this project possible. So I'm going to talk to you about our project briefly, which explored uh, cross-cultural differences in nonverbal empathic communication in the clinical context. Now, why I got interested in this project is because maybe like many of you, I come from a multicultural background. I'm half Irish, half American. I grew up in Germany, Italy, Ireland, also lived in um, South Africa, and now the US. And I'm married to a Cuban. But more importantly, I have an Irish cousin with severe cystic fibrosis. Now, she tends to um, hide her negative emotions when in public, including uh, behaving you know, more stoically, including doctor visits. Now, why this is because uh, cultural norms in Western Ireland place a high value on maintaining social harmony, in, in public especially. So why this, while this might not have been a problem 50 years ago, nowadays the population is more and more diverse and more physicians come from a diverse cultural background. So the consequence of this is that doctors might not know how much physical or emotional pain their patients are in. So this made me wonder, how can nonverbal expressions of empathy be understood in a cross-cultural clinical context? Given the rates of global diversification, these misunderstandings are growing, and the potential for miscommunication is huge. It turns out nonverbal behavior accounts for 60 to 90 percent of communication. So nonverbal behavior in particular is a key medium in which to express uh, feelings. So more medical professionals need to be, become more skilled at reading nonverbal behaviors, especially in a cross-cultural context, in order to be able to, to assess and treat their patient and provide humanistic care. Diego? Hi, I'm Diego. Um, so as Anya mentioned, we looked at cultural differences in nonverbal behavior in the patient-doctor relationship. And our systematic review started by looking at over 15,000 articles, and we whittled our way down. It was quite an onerous task. Uh, whittled our way down to a final 15 articles. And these articles revealed some pretty interesting findings. So it is the case that patients seem to desire these concepts of empathy and respect, but how clinicians can convey that non-verbally generally varies across cultures. So while there may be some nonverbal behaviors that seem to be desired universally, like open body posture or smile or demonstrations of warmth, there are specific nonverbal behaviors that are culturally dependent like length and directness of eye gaze, meaning of hand gestures, colloquial expressions, like in the US we do a thumbs up, which is good, but in other cultures that can actually be viewed as something that's offensive. Um, things like silence, pauses in, in conversation, rate of speech and tone of voice, these are all culturally dependent nonverbal behaviors that, that can be conveyed by clinicians and interpreted differently by different pa patient populations. So I'll just give a couple quick examples as our time is short. So for example, in uh, Tobago, it is viewed as disrespectful to maintain sustained eye contact with an elder. So as a clinician, attempting to make sustained eye contact as a sign of respect or reassurance to a patient could actually be deeply misunderstood. Another example was in that the Bahamas and, and um, Jamaica, uh, medical students indicated that physical proximity is actually viewed as invasive rather than reassuring. Whereas in, in stark contrast, in a, in a different study, Brazilian patients indicated that they view American clinicians as cold and distant and actually prefer greater physical proximity. So those are just a couple examples of, of how nonverbal behavior can be different across these different cultures and oftentimes come in, in stark contrast to one another. Um, so we think there are a few important practice implications as well. One of them is that uh, Clinicians should learn the cultural norms while still maintaining curiosity about the patient and accounting for individual differences. So I think it was Ron Epstein yesterday who talked about this idea of maintaining curiosity about the patient. So we're certainly not making or looking to make generalizations about, about each culture. Um, we also think that medical training should incorporate nonverbal behavior training into uh, both the training for medical students and, and residents and even in faculty and continuing med medical education. And finally, we think that there should be greater self-awareness on behalf of clinicians to recognize how they're conveying nonverbal behavior and how that's being perceived by their patients. 
So those are some of the, the practice implications that we that we took away from. And so we think that these this nonverbal this idea of nonverbal behavior in cross cultural context is important not only in its own right, but also because now dozens of studies have come out showing how empathy, both verbally and nonverbally, can impact the patient patient clinician relationship from things like patient satisfaction to improved patient adherence to treatment, even to hard medical outcomes. So our systematic review, we think, highlights some of these nuanced ideas of nonverbal behavior and cross-cultural patient-doctor relationships, but also highlights the need for, for more work in this area because, as we may have time later to talk about, there were some methodological uh, limitations and some things that we, we think could be improved going forward. So we're really excited to see where this field goes, and thanks so much. Thank you.